All right, hey there, and welcome to this episode where we're gonna continue our discussion on using ACT or acceptance and commitment therapy uh, for OCD and anxiety. And so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Cotty, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the founder of Restored Minds. And if you're looking for help and guidance on your path to OCD and anxiety recovery, um, you know, head over to RestoredMinds.com or click on the links in the notes for sure, um, because we have several resources for you to get started and uh, definitely check those out. Also, if you enjoy the show, please help us out by liking and subscribing and leaving a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. So um, let's go ahead and dive into part two today. So in the last episode, and we'll link to, we'll link, um, you know, to the episode uh, in the show, we talked about ACT and we talked about the six pillars of ACT and we really talked about the first two pillars that I wanted to discuss, which were the self as context and cognitive diffusion. And we talked about this idea of understanding that again, you are not your thoughts and feelings and really understanding the context, this idea of consciousness even, um, to, you know, be able to create the space and diffuse from your thoughts and feelings. So in this episode, I want to dive into the second two pillars when, when what we're really going to talk about is this idea of attention to the present moment and acceptance. So again, I think it's so important that we understand, at least this is, this is my understanding, my context and how I teach people about ACT when I work with them. ACT is not something we use to replace ERP. Okay. We're using these in conjunction with it, right? So these, these principles go together. Um, a lot of times when people learn act, they, they understand ERP better, you know, uh, or they, they understand kind of what we're doing in many ways act is ERP, right? To, to some degree, you know, and I'll kind of make the case for that here because with ERP, we're confronting an exposure and we're, you know, again, having the anxiety, having the feelings come up, and then again, not engaging in compulsions. And so this today, when we're talking about attention to the present moment and uh, acceptance, really what we're talking about here is our ability to be aware of what we're feeling right now and to be with that. And, and in some respects, that is an element of exposure response prevention. Now, we're not necessarily purposely inducing an exposure, but what we are doing is able to be able to sit with what is as it is. And as we know with OCD and anxiety, thoughts can come up all day, right? Same with feelings, right? You know, they can be present all day. And so our ability to be present in this moment right now and to actually be able to accept what is, is paramount to your success when it comes to this recovery process. So Let's start with this idea of present moment awareness. Now, I think what a lot of people mistakenly do with mindfulness and with, you know, meditation, even, you know, reading works like Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, um, is, is they try to focus so hard on the present moment to essentially get rid of the thoughts and sensations that they don't want to experience. And I don't believe that's actually what the pro what, what like Eckhart Tolle is, is talking about. And I don't believe that's using the process correctly because what we're really talking about is actually being present and aware of what is, and we're not trying to focus on like a tree or our breath or focus on something to essentially drown out the stuff that's going on in our in our space, right? In our awareness. So if you're noticing your mind racing really fast, we're not focusing on our breathing to make to essentially get rid of the mind. What we're doing is really being aware of what's happening right now. So if your mind is racing really fast right now, if you're having a ton of thought or you're feeling really anxious, we actually want to be present with that and actually feel it and be with it exactly as it is. Like what a lot of people do with the mind is the mind naturally tries to draw us to the past and to the future. That's where fear lives, right? So it's either driving us and causing us to feel guilty about something in the past or driving us into the future and having us worry about something that could happen in the future. That's where 
anxiety really exists. So yes, we don't want to get caught up in the content of the mind, but from a place of self selfless context, from a place of awareness, we want to be able to notice the mind and, and being able to actually allow the mind and accept the mind exactly as it is. So if it's throwing up thoughts we don't necessarily like, that's okay, right? Like we can sit and be present with it and to face it and confront it exactly as it is and not attempt to change it. See, this is where, this is really why this is exposure and response prevention, to, um, you know, from, from the correct context, because what most people are doing is their mind is presenting stuff that they don't like, and they're attempting to get rid of and change and remove, or, you know, trying to focus on something else, distract themselves. They're doing all these mental compulsions. When what we're talking about here is to be able to confront what's happening in the present moment exactly as it is. And... When we are doing that, you know, it's, it's, it's so important that we are present from a place of self as context and confronting what is as it is. Now, the second piece of this is this idea of acceptance. Now, what a lot of people do is they try to use this idea of acceptance to get rid of something. And it's so paradoxical. And so um, it doesn't work when you do that. Right. So the the idea is, is people will hear things like, well, if you can truly just accept the thoughts and feelings, then they'll go away. You know, and this idea of the reason is, is because what you resist persists, as I think Young said. And um, it might have been Rogers that said that. I'm not sure who um, right off the top of my head, but it's a famous kind of phrase in psychology, what you resist persists. So as you resist these intrusive thoughts and you resist these anxious feelings, that's actually paradoxically what's causing you to get stuck in this loop. So the idea of acceptance is, is once we are able to truly accept their presence, there tends to be a dissolving of it. And, you know, we, we aren't bothered by it. So we're not resistant. So it surfaces and it passes with time. And then people hear that and they're like, okay, well, I'm going to accept my thoughts and I'm going to accept the anxiety very hard and very intensely with the intention of I'm going to get rid of it. But notice if your intention of using acceptance is to get rid of something, you're not ever going to actually engage in acceptance because it's, it's this grand paradox where the whole reason you're trying to accept it is because you don't accept it. You see? And that's, this is a big trap that people fall in here. And they're, you know, they sit there, they're like, I'm going to focus on my thoughts. I'm going to focus on my feelings. I'm going to accept, I'm going to accept. And then they get upset. They're like, well, they're still here. And it's like, and, and, you know, I use this analogy sometimes in my, um, in my coaching program in groups where, and I talk about like, if someone that you loved or cared about, like a friend, you know, even came and stayed at your house, you know, what would it be like to accept that they're there with you like would you constantly check to see if they're still here would you constantly be asking them when they're going to leave would you be you know wanting them to leave you know like no like if, if someone was staying with you and you were accepting them it would be like yeah stay as long as you want you know like and and it really is a complete perspective and attitude shift on everything that you're you're probably doing with the thoughts and feelings. And from a place of the present moment awareness, we're accepting what presently is. So if you're having a ton of contraction in your in your chest and tightness here, our willingness to say like, hey, look, can I just allow that to be here right now? If my mind's going super fast, like can I allow my mind to just do what it's doing? And not meddle in it and try to change it and get rid of it and, and fix it. Because all the things you're doing in an attempt to try to control, to fix, to change are all driven from a place of non-acceptance, of resistance. And what ERP really is, is removing compulsions and actually, again, allowing the anxiety to be there, allowing the thoughts to be there, allowing the experiences that we're having to be as they are. Because the paradox that happens is once we truly do that, there is this passing of the energy, right? It does, it does dissolve. It does pass in our bodies. But that doesn't happen until we truly allow it to be there. 
And so with acceptance, the idea is, is we want to really get to a place where we're accepting of what is as it is right now in this moment. And what that means is a willingness to not change anything, to let it be right there, right now in the present moment. So that's really the second two pillars. And then in part three here, we're going to talk about the last two, which is this idea of um, value-based decisions and committed action and kind of tie up how the whole thing comes together. So make sure to check out part three. And again, check out, um, head over to restoredminds.com. And if you haven't already, please grab your tickets to the OCD SoCal conference where um, I'm going to be giving a, another or a deeper presentation on this with another therapist. Um, and we're going to be diving into how to really use this for OCD and anxiety recovery. So with that said, hope you guys have a great week and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Hey there. So if you enjoyed that video, we've linked up a few more videos that we think you'd find helpful as well. And if you have found this helpful, we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing. And if you're looking for help and guidance, please check out restoredminds.com as we have several options for you to get started. See you guys soon.